Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and finally Android 12 is here. In this video I'm gonna go through each and every small change in Android 12. I have it installed on my Pixel 4a and I'm gonna use my Pixel 5 with Android 11 to show you the difference between the two. So let's see what's new with Android 12 but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Let's start with the notifications shade. The small pull down indicator in the quick settings area is now black instead of light gray like in Android 11, so it's more visible. The date and the status bar icons are now closer to the edges compared to Android 11. In Android 12, the app icons have circles around them and the circle color matches the app accent color like in Facebook and WhatsApp. The app logo itself is in white color instead of light gray. Take Instagram icon as an example. But when the icons are minimized, they look exactly the same. The notification card got some refinements too. Let's take this Facebook notification as an example. In Android 11, the card is taller because it shows the app icon, the app name, and the time elapsed. After that, you will see the app name one more time in a separate line, then the notification content. While in Android 12, you see the app name once to save some space. Not only this, but now in Android 12, more notifications can be expanded. As you see here, I have the same Facebook notification on both phones. And in Android 12, I can expand the notification to see more information. While in Android 11, I can't do this. And when I expand notifications, as you see, the content is showing in a smaller space with bigger margins at the sides. And if the notification has a thumbnail, it will appear in a smaller canvas with rounded corners instead of taking the full width. Next, all notifications now show the snooze icon in the corner, so you no longer need to swipe to any of the sides to get access to the same snooze button. However, when you swipe the same way in Android 12, you will still get the same icons as in Android 11. In Android 12, the shading color now matches the device theme, while in Android 11, it's always dark. I have both versions set to light theme so you can see the difference at the top area between the notifications categories and at the bottom area as well. And here is how it looks in dark theme. Either way, Android 11 has much darker shading color. I also noticed in Android 12, the dark and light themes use different colors. First off, the white color is not as white as in Android 11. And when it comes to dark theme, Android 11 is using a black background with darker gray color for the toggles. While in Android 12, the background is not as dark as Android 11 and the toggles are using a lighter gray color. Next, the notification history now looks different. The page you see now is part of the settings app that we're gonna talk about later in this video, so expect to see the same design under settings. First, the menu name has a white background, while the rest of the page has light blue color and the notification cards are in light gray. The activation toggle has a pill-shaped design with a text sign indicating that the feature is turned on and it doesn't have the same black background like in Android 11. Next, the media controls. As you see, the two media cards look totally different. In Android 12, they fill the entire width of the quick settings area. The album art is bigger, filling the height of the card. The name of the app is no longer showing, you can only see the app icon. The song details and the playback controls are stacked on top of each other instead of being horizontally next to each other so you can see more text. The media output button is no longer showing the name of the output device but you can only see the icon. And when you tap on it, it will not dismiss your notifications shade like it does in Android 11. And here's how they look side by side when you expand them. And the same design applies to the lock screen as well. One more thing worth mentioning related to the new media controls. When you go to settings and then sound and vibration, then go to media. Now you can choose which app can keep the media controls for extended period of time. While in Android 11, when you turn on this toggle, it will apply the settings to each and every app, so now you have more control. One more thing related to notifications, as you see here, the now playing notification has a text button called the view history, while here it's using an icon. Also, in Android 12, you can snooze the now playing notification, while here in Android 11, when you swipe to the side, you will not find the snooze button. Next, the picture in picture. And now in Android 12, when you start playing a video, you will see a transparent circle in the middle of the window, indicating that you can touch this area to get more controls. 
which is not available in Android 11. The second change is the ability to place the window furthermore towards the top, which is not possible in Android 11. And when I do this, the video will become smaller with black bars at the top, left and right sides to avoid covering the status bar. The same thing can be done with other apps as well, like Google Maps, for example. And as you see here, the picture in picture window is placed at the very top of the screen, but it doesn't get the same black bars like in playing videos. Next, the screenshots. And now in Android 11, when you take a screenshot, you will see a small X at the top right corner of the screenshot thumbnail that will allow you to dismiss it. And when you try to swipe to any of the sides, it will not go away. Here in Android 12, when you take a screenshot, the small X is gone, but now you can swipe to any of the sides to dismiss. The second change is the new editing tools. Now when you tap on the edit button on both versions, you will see a lot more tools at the bottom in Android 12 compared to Android 11. First, the undo and redo buttons moved towards the top to give more room for the new editing tools. The crop got its own button which doesn't exist in Android 11, but it works exactly the same. The second new button is for adding text. Once I tap on it, I can start typing, but I wasn't able to change the text color because the colors are hidden behind the keyboard, which is a bug, and that's expected in an early build like this. After adding the text, you can dra drag it anywhere you want. You can pinch to zoom or rotate. And finally, you can dismiss using this small X. The third new button is for adding emojis. Tapping on it will give you six suggestions. To get access to the full list of emojis, tap on the three dots over here, and it will show you all the emojis you can possibly get on this phone. Tapping on any of them will add the emoji to the screenshot. You can also drag it, pinch to zoom, and so on. Those two buttons are exactly the same like in Android 11, no difference here. But there is a new button here, which is the eraser. When you tap on it, you can start erasing whatever you added to the screenshot. And when you share the screenshot, it will show you an edit button next to the nearby share, which doesn't exist in Android 11. Tapping on this button will take you back to the same editing screen with the same changes you applied previously, just in case you missed something that you want to add before sharing. This new edit button will show up in the share sheet even when you share the screenshot directly from here, or when you tap and hold on any photo from your recent apps screen and then tap on share. Next, the Styles and Wallpapers app. Under the wallpaper tab, there is nothing new, but when you go to style and they try to add a new one, the wizard screens now look different. As you see, they are using bigger font with more white spaces. And under the icon page, you will see a different logo over here and instead of using the Wi-Fi. Other than this, they are exactly the same. Going back to the grid tab, and here you will find a new size, which is four by five. It's somewhere in between the default and the four by four. I personally was looking forward to have the 4x5 size. I like it more. It makes the icons a little bit bigger, but not too big. But unfortunately, after activating this size, all the icons on my home screen are gone now. Even when I revert back to the default size, it doesn't return back my icons. So I don't recommend to use it for now. Now let's go through the settings. First, the search bar at the top is not filling the entire width of the screen. It's only filling two thirds and leaving the rest of the space to the new profile picture, which is bigger than the one in Android 11. Tapping on the search bar in Android 12 will give you smoother and more refined animation. Going inside any of the menus, you will see the menu name and the submenus list have different background colors, similar to what we have seen in the notification history page. The Wi-Fi toggle also changed to match the one we saw in the notification history page, and that's the case with any toggle that used to appear on top of a black bar, and this is how it looks when it's turned off. So let's turn the Wi-Fi back on, and now you can share your Wi-Fi password using nearby share by tapping on the share button, and then authenticate using your pin code or fingerprint, and you will find a nearby button under the barcode, and when you tap on it, any available device will get a notification like this one, so you can share your Wi-Fi password that way. Next, under apps and notifications, then conversations, you will get a new button called clear all of the recent ones. Tapping on this button will clear all the previously identified conversations, or you can uh, clear individual conversations by tapping on the X next to each one. 
However, tapping on any conversation in this page will crash your settings app, which is another bug that I spotted in this build. Next, under display, the brightness slider is now bigger, which is gonna give you higher precision while changing your brightness. Nightlight got a new toggle next to it to turn the feature on or off without the need to go inside the sub menu like an Android 11. Nightlight got a new toggle next to it to turn the feature on or off without the need to go inside the sub menu like an Android 11. Also, the information text has been pushed towards the top and the information icon is no longer showing. And that will be the case in each and every settings page. Any information text is now showing at the top instead of the bottom, so I'm not gonna keep mentioning this. Next, the screen timeout menu is now different. When you tap on it in Android 12, it will take you to another page to choose the timings. Plus, the screen attention toggle has been moved under the timeout menu. While here in Android 11, when you tap on it, you will get this overlay card to choose the time and the screen attention has its own page to turn it on or off. Next, sound and vibration. Beside the media controls change that I showed you earlier, now the shortcut to prevent ringing got a quick toggle next to it, similar to what we have seen with the night light feature. Other than this, they work exactly the same with the same options to choose from. Next, accessibility. First, the display section is now better organized and all the settings related to the display are now listed under the text and display menu. Most of the features you see here are not new, but there are a couple of new features and the first one is called reduce bright colors. It says here in the description, reduce bright colors reduces the screen brightness. So I'm not sure how it's different from the normal brightness slider. But anyways, you have here an intensity slider when you drag it all the way to the right, it will decrease the screen brightness and it works with the normal brightness slider. Normally, as you see here, I have the brightness all the way up. I can also still play around with the reduce bright colors and both of them do the exact same thing. There are a couple of extra toggles here as well, one for activating the accessibility shortcut and the other one is to keep the feature on even after restart. The second new feature under text and display is called bold text and here is how the text looks when you turn on the switch. Back to the main accessibility page, as you see here there is a new item called tap assistance and when you go inside it combines three different features that used to be separated in Android 11. The first one is touch and hold delay, time to take action and auto click. Next, the system controls menu now combines the system navigation, power button ends call and auto rotate screen. One more consolidated menu here called audio adjustment and when you go inside you will see the mono audio and the audio balance. Next, there is a new menu called safety and emergency. This menu will give you access to the same settings you usually get under the safety app like emergency information, status updates, car crash detection, and crisis alerts. And when you go inside these menus, you will see different pages from the safety app. So you no longer need to open the safety app because everything is already under settings. Next, system. And now when you go to languages and input and then tap on advanced, there is a new toggle here called redirect vibration and the description says send vibration to game controller when connected. I activated the feature, connected my Xbox controller and played a couple of games to see if that makes any difference. But in my case, the controller didn't vibrate once. So please let me know in the comments if you know more information about this toggle. Back to system and now under the date and time the toggles got renamed as you see here it says use network provided time use network provided time zone while here it says set time automatically set time zone automatically plus there is a new toggle here called location time zone detection so you can use your location to automatically detect your time zone if you want to and it says here uh, allows the device location to be used to detect the current time zone and the final change I spotted under settings is also under system. And when you go to reset options, there is a new option here called erase downloaded sims, which doesn't exist in Android 11. There are also small tweaks in the home screen. Now, when you tap and hold on the home screen, you will get a bigger overlay menu. And that's exactly the case with the apps shortcuts. And the final change under the home screen. Now, when you create a folder, you no longer see the folder name suggestions in the keyboard suggestions strip. 
like it does in Android 11. So for example, I'm gonna put those two apps together. Then I'm gonna try to edit the name of the folder. As you see here, I'm getting suggestions for the folder name, which doesn't exist in Android 12. And finally, the lock screen. As you see here in Android 11, there is a small lock icon at the top which doesn't exist in Android 12. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Android 12. So please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.